If you were locked in a self-imposed prison for years and had no idea how to find your family, what would you do? Oh, and you had spider powers. Welcome to the Complete Story Series, where we take trade paperbacks and single issues and we break them down into digestible bites to help you understand. And then review the dramatic back to you. All alterations to the panels, text, and images are to prevent copyright problems, and all art is owned by its respective companies. Don't forget to support this great industry by buying these books online or buying them at your local comic book store. During the Spider-Verse event, we learned that there is a second person that was bitten by the same spider as Peter Parker, and she was granted spider powers. Her name is Cindy Moon, and now that the Inheritors are gone and Cindy is no longer in hiding, she has no idea where to restart her life, because she can't seem to find any of her old friends or family. But none of that matters right now, because Cindy is fighting it out with a guy in a dragon suit, and it feels great to be in the game. As she ties him up with her webbing, she asks, Who are you supposed to be? And he tells her, My name is Dragon Claw! Seriously? You sound like a Pokemon. Is Pokemon still a thing? Asking for a friend. Then she goes in for another hit, and suddenly, her spider sense goes haywire, and she loses her train of thought, giving Dragon Claw the opening that he needs to cut her webbing and send her plummeting to the streets down below. Luckily, Spider-Man comes by and catches her. He drops her on a nearby roof and asks if she's okay. But she drops off at telling him she's fine, she's just a little late for work. As she walks out of the alley, she webs up some clothing for herself, and she thinks back to her parents, her life before all of this. While still thinking about this, she makes her way to the Fact Channel under the new editor-in-chief, J. Jonah Jameson. He immediately takes a shine to her as she's using an old pen and paper method, and then he likes her even more when she suggests that they write an article about Silk. But she quickly goes back to thinking about her family, all of those walks with her little brother and talking about how it's so weird that she fights with her mom and dad. Eventually, she gets back on the road as Silk and runs into Pokemon Dude again, and he corrects her, stating that it is Dragon Claw. But this time she makes a silk shield and she lobs it at him, taking him out of the sky. And then when she went to go check on him, she discovered that he escaped. She looked around shouting, CRIME DOESN'T PAY! Hoping that he could hear her, but he was gone. This whole thing is overwhelming for her. No family, no friends, no ex-boyfriend any longer. She had such a normal life and now everything is just static. The city is so loud. And the bunker that she was in for years is so quiet. So she went back to it to be alone so that she could start her search for her family. Where did they go? They couldn't have just vanished. But as she sets the bunker up to live in, someone is watching her through cameras in the walls. This isn't the end for her though. The next day she gets back to it, capturing more villains and going back to work at the Fact Channel. All the while, she's tracking down her family. They moved at some point and they left no forwarding address. And their things were all kept in a storage container until they just weren't. No one knows when they came to get them. Clearly they had help getting away, but the only man who had the money to do that isn't around anymore, and all of their old places are empty. Heck, even the pizza place that she broke up with her ex-boyfriend is now closed. So much has changed. But as she's standing there, a giant robot comes running down the street shouting, Hail Hydra! Cindy switches back to being Silk and she starts beating on it, and then she starts throwing it around until he runs into the sewers and she has to chase it down there. But in the sewer, it gets the drop on her and he begins to strangle her. Luckily, she slips out of it and hits it so hard that one of its eyeballs falls out. And then she pulls out her claws and shatters the robot. She then crawls out of the sewer and heads back to her bunker, where she gets back to the drawing board. And the individuals on the cameras comment on how much faster she is than they thought. They didn't expect her to drop the Hydra robot so quickly. Luckily, it did manage to get some of her blood on it so they can continue their testing. The next day, when she's on the streets again doing her patrols, Dragonclaw decided to come back for his revenge by throwing her through a window on a building. He then comes at her full speed, telling her that he will win. She made him a joke last time. He takes a massive swing at her, throwing her into another nearby building. So she decides to swing away from there, only to have him burn her webs and drop her into a dumpster. Then, he throws a car onto her. She then begins to black out as Dragonclaw gets ready to continue this. This leads to a massive adrenaline rush for her as she gets up and begins to scale a building as quickly as she can. And as she goes to the top of it, she webs his wings and jumps off the building, tearing them off his back. He hits the ground as she begins to pound on him over and over until she breaks his mask and he begs her to stop. She does stop and she asks what his name is and what is his story. And he tells her that his name is Harris Porter and he's doing this for his kid. He's a convicted felon with priors and no one will hire him, so he ended up pulling jobs for Black Cat. She's even the one that paid for all of his upgrades, so she recommends the Alchemix building because she hears that they're hiring ex-felons, and she brings him to the hospital to get all patched up. Then, as she's emailing the Fact Channel photos about her fight, she finds herself confronted by Black Cat herself. 
Well, well, look who I found. Lucky me. I knew you were bad from the minute we met, but I didn't know you'd be bad for business. Silk turns to her. Didn't you used to be a good guy? You really are new, aren't you? There aren't any good guys left, she yells as she jumps in swiping at Silk. Silk tries to web her up and Black Cat grabs her webbing and throws her into another nearby window. Retire while you can, rookie. And then Black Cat left her there. Filled with anxiety and fed up with how poorly she's doing at this job, she went home. Silk did make a difference for someone, though, because Harris went home to his child and he promised to clean up his life. Problem is, he crossed Black Cat and she wasn't about to have any of that. So the next day, while he was out looking for a job, his daughter met a not-so-nice kitty lady. That same next day, Cindy was at work, but not really working. She was looking for any information that she could find on her parents. And J. Jonah Jameson came by thinking that she was on Facebook or something, until he quickly realized that she was actually looking at police records. She couldn't hold it in anymore, so she told him everything. About the spider bite, being locked up for 10 years, getting out, her family being missing, that she moonlights as silk, everything. Jonah looks at her. I'm sorry about all of this, Cindy. When I was mayor, I had a few friends in the NYPD. I'll have them get whatever information they have on your family. And Cindy? Yeah? It's okay to ask for help. At that moment, another reporter came by and reported that the man named Harris Porter's child has been kidnapped. Cindy suited up and she began swinging around looking for Harris. And it wasn't too hard. As she found him, he opened up by shouting, This is your fault! And he began flinging flames at her. But once she webbed him up, he explained that Black Cat took his little girl. And she'll do the worst if he can't bring Black Cat Silk. So Silk promises to help. They call up Spider-Man and they plan an assault on Black Cat's base of operations. They break in and they begin beating down the bad guys with Spider-Man helping Pokemon Dude as Cindy runs in to rescue the little girl. She then runs out to Spider-Man and Pokemon Dude and gives Pokemon Dude his daughter back. But Black Cat arrives, so Spider-Man gets Harris and his daughter out of there while Silk finishes this little adventure with Black Cat. They use a sonic weapon on Silk, throwing her down, but she gets back up and she kicks Black Cat through a wall just as the entire building blows up. The explosion knocks Silk unconscious and leaves Black Cat cursing her out. Once Silk wakes up, though, she finds herself strapped to a table with an odd-looking doctor telling her that he's the one that blew up the building and he works for the people who have her family. He even has her fingers pinned down to ensure that she can't web her way out of this one. Back at the wreckage, Spider-Man gets back to see the place in ruins and Black Cat is looking all over for Silk. Black Cat knows that she was double-crossed by the man that created all of her technology. And she knows the man that took Silk. Spider-Man is still confused as to what is going on though and he asks if Silk is okay. And Black Cat tells him, yes, but she won't be for long. And then she runs off in the direction of the scientist lab. While this is going on, Silk is trying to question the man. Has he seen her family? Where are they? Who does he work for? But he doesn't give her much. Just that he's never actually seen her family and has no idea where they are, but the people who have them have the deepest pockets ever. Then, before he can do anything else to hurt her, she breaks her own finger, allowing her to get out of the holds, and then she hits him over the head. But just as he's getting up pissed off at Silk, Black Cat arrives and begins beating on him for double-crossing her. Black Cat then begins throwing him around the room until enough damage is done that it begins to fall apart and it crumbles on him. Luckily, Silk webbed her way out of the room just in time, but she lost her only lead as the rubble is landed on the old man, killing him. She looks at Black Cat. You killed him! You killed my only lead! And she begins fighting with Black Cat again until she gets knocked out the window and Black Cat catches her by her hair. It doesn't have to be this way, Silk. You can work for me. People who work for me don't wind up on operating tables or hanging for their lives by their hair. So, Silk cuts her own hair and then webs up Black Cat, pulling her down with her. Black Cat hits every level of a fire escape as they both hit the ground. And then Silk slams her so hard that she dents the roof of a car. Black Cat manages to slip away just in time. Let's say we call it a draw. Think about my offer, or next time, one of us won't be walking away. Silk curled up into a corner in an alley as the rain began to fall. Spider-Man walked over. Are you okay? Just a few broken bones. I don't suppose you... The spider tracer got smashed in your fight. She killed him, Peter. I'm never gonna find my family, am I? Hey, don't talk like that. She then got up. You set me free, Peter. I'll always be grateful. Always. It's just... Freedom is hard. And then he held her close while she finally let it all out. Nothing is going right for her. She went back to the bunker and in frustration she threw her chair into the wall, cracking it. And it was then that she saw the cameras that were watching her. She smashed them, stating, the peep show's over. The next day she went to her job, and it was the end of the world. It's not just a saying, the actual end of the world was happening. 
An event known as an incursion was happening at that exact moment. Something that the Avengers failed to stop and all of reality was about to be sucked into a place known as Battleworld and the secret wars were about to happen. So, this was her last day on Earth. And that's the moment that J. Jonah Jameson gave her a report that the NYPD brought to him. They found someone matching her brother. He was in a halfway house after being in a car accident while on a designer drug from the Goblin Nation a few months back. He hands her the paperwork and he tells her to go. Now. There may not be a tomorrow. As the world was ending all around her, Silk jumped out into town and she began to make her way across it. Death and destruction were going on all over and everyone was begging for her help. So she did that. She helped as many as she could and it took time. But she managed to save people. And then, just as she felt that she would never make it to her brother, Pokemon Dude helped her and took over so that she could find her family. She did finally make it to the halfway house and she ran into what was supposed to be his room. And he recognized her. Cindy, he said. And she realized that it was Albert, her brother. She ran over to him holding him and the entire world began to go white around them as it ended. I'm sorry, Albert, were the last words that she could say. And then the world ended and Battleworld began. The story of Silk does continue in all new, all different Marvel with issue number one. And trust me, you do want to find out what happens next. I'm Benny the Comic Storian, and if you enjoyed this video, make sure you check out the other ones on the screen right now. You just might like those too.